Another week, boys, and another twab. This week at Bungie, we celebrate lots of stuff. The dawning, new partnerships, a year that is about to end, and a new one that's about to begin. Also, activities that are coming very soon. Also, I'm going to celebrate that this is my first time writing a twab. Hello, world. This is also the last twab until next year. That sounds like a long time, but worry not. We'll be back with tons of new topics to tackle starting on January the 12th. We'll use this time off to rest, so we recommend you try and do that too. But for now, let's focus on the present. Here's a brief summary of what we're talking about. About today. Did you watch that amazing TGA trailer we dropped? The Dawning is here. Eva Levante is back in the tower with cookies and gifts. Celebrate your moments of triumph. Saladin and his Iron Banner are coming back in early January with new rewards. We will talk a bit about secrets. We have the winners of our Ubisoft Partnership Community Contest. You also chose your favorite armless ornaments. We look back at a few highlights for 2022. And last, we say goodbye to a member of the team. Oh, it hurts! We're gonna get into it in just a second, guys. But emotional damage! A very rewarding trailer. Last Thursday, we launched a new Destiny 2 Life all gameplay trailer during the Game Awards. We hope you enjoyed it and that it serves as a little tease of what's coming on February the 28th. So how about we watch it one more time? Yeah, guys, if you haven't checked out our breakdown, we did a trailer breakdown of that because it was actual Lightfall gameplay. We saw Strand gameplay. It wasn't like a CGI trailer or just some cinematics. It was actually Strand. So feel free to check that, guys. Some crazy stuff that's coming February the 28th. I don't think Strand is going to be as busted as Stasis was, but man, it's going to bring some crazy shenanigans against when you can lasso a titan and literally ride behind him while he supers into an enemy oh it's gonna be nuts yummy yummy i got cookies in my tummy dude the things i have to say in these swabs right do you have your exotic oven mints at hand because the dawning is here and we need to cook guardian we recommend you invest a bit in resilience to handle the oven heat maybe some strength to carry the ingredients and even some intellect to remember the preferred recipes of everyone around the tower and beyond if you want more information about this heartwarming cookie eating and not asking questions about the ingredients seasonal events we have a wonderful article with all the information you might need There's new quest to complete, a new recipe for certain cheeky ghosts, snowballs to throw, and of course, some wonderful rewards. Old favorites are coming back with new perks and an origin trait, and we also have a new Stasis Amalon lightweight pulse rifle called Stay Frosty PR7. Now go talk to Abolita slash Granny Eva in the tower to start. The dawning will run until January 3rd, 2023. And now, check out some of the fancy new things you'll find during the event this year. There's also exclusive unlockable items linked to the upgraded event card available for silver. No lie, guys, the pulse rifle is actually really, really good. We play with a number of roles in our review. I think it's one of the best lightweight pulse rifles in the game. Sure, the BXR is still the king, but this guy with the right rolls, oh, it shreds. Outside of that, though, lots of different items you can get over the course of this event. Great pictures here of everything. I will say you do not have to purchase the event card if you don't want to, but one thing we forgot to mention the other day was actually the bright dust you get from the repeatable bounties for the dawning event. Guys, if you're looking to farm bright dust, now is the time to do it. Moving on, this was a triumph. We're making a note here. Go complete your personal moments of triumphs guardian there's a new ghost and sparrow waiting for you we are sure you already have some unlocked since these triumphs are based on some of your greatest successes during the year once you have unlocked 28 of the 30 you can equip the new emblem and title and if you feel like it acquire the real life seal the patch and or the t-shirt available at the bungee store now not one nor two but fortress valis forge also has a gift for you and by that we mean a new iron banner week with new loot and a new game mode to get the hang of the time previously known as lord saladin might be an old wolf but he can still learn a few new tricks iron banner returns on January the 3rd with a new game mode called Fortress, where you capture and hold zones while defeating opponents, but there's a twist, a cabal twist. The objectives will change once Kaido and her troops get involved, but we're not revealing the exact details of how Fortress works because we want you to run up that hill yourselves. No lie, guys. Dude, the Iron Banner game modes, especially like last season, have been really good. I'm excited about whatever this is. During Season of the Seraph, players will have a chance to earn two returning Iron Banner weapons, the Dark Decider Auto Rifle and the Ganora's Axe Slug Shotgun, both with new perks and the Iron Banner Orange and trait for the complete list of weapons in the loot pool check the twa from december 1st by the way guys we did a breakdown video of all random roles for season of the seraph literally everything minus the dungeon weapons which we're individually reviewing if you want to check that out a link to that will be in the description below it is a long video it's like almost an hour long but we literally have like 40 plus weapons this season and of course there's an iron banner armor refresh wolf cloak mohawk helmet the best robes on this side of nessa's radio Loria lake you got it yeah 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 that taking king set baby now keep those donations coming as Game to Give 2022 enters its second week, we have an exciting announcement to make. A Ghost of Dawning Pass has appeared for a limited time. Resurrected from 2019, the Gilded Shell is now available alongside the Ghost of Dawning present. The new Tenderhearted Shell for all donations $60 or more. For those of you who have already donated $60 or more to this year's campaign, your Gilded Shell is waiting for you back at your redemption portal to redeem to your Bungie.net account. Oh, look at these sexy things. Now, we already raised more than $500,000 through the community's generous support. Game to Give runs until December 26th 
seconds, and there's plenty of time to get involved. Donate to earn both exclusive Game to Give Ghost Shells, register to fundraise and join the Light Keepers Guild, and tune in to our Feature Streamer Marathon. And again, guys, all of this is present at GameToGive.com. It's a secret to everybody. There were some rumors swirling around that Bungie was done making secrets forever. While the record was corrected, we wanted to talk a bit about this subject and the feedback we have been seeing from players hungry for surprise content. Here's Assistant Game Director Robbie Stevens to share some of our thoughts. So from Robbie, we want to take a moment to address the community's feedback around secrets in Destiny 2. But before we get started, if you take one thing away from this communication, let it be that people working on Destiny 2 believe that secrets are an important part of this franchise. And we're dedicated to delivering secret experiences, both small and large, throughout the coming year. First and foremost, let's address the Reddit AMA about the difficulty of encrypting content that brought this conversation to a head. Data mining and leaks are not unique problems to Destiny. Every live game deals with this issue because it's one of the most challenging engineering problems in games today. That said, our communication was misinterpreted to mean that we are no longer building secret experiences, which is false. We've delivered hidden and secret story beats and content this year and will continue to do so next year. For some of the community, secrets have come to mean either a secret mission or a puzzle. It's understandable that the community is hungry for more of this content and is interpreting any hidden thing we do as a signpost of something bigger to come. Just understand that we'll never openly reveal a secret mission or a puzzle before it goes live and that, although we're intentionally hiding things for you to discover in every release, not every secret can be something as big as a mission or a puzzle. Now looking back on this past year, The Witch Queen was a release containing a fair share of secrets and the experiences on the throne world were directly influenced by content like secret missions and dungeons. Additionally, as many of you have noticed, we've been layering teases and secrets about the future content throughout our stories, lore entries, and world building leading up to Lionfall. However, we know that you want more. We know that we haven't released a secret mission that scratches the same itch as Presage or Zero Hour or The Whisper this year. Those missions were some of the most challenging content for our teams to build, which is why we've only released at most one secret mission within a 12 month period. But as we developed our plans leading to Lightfall and Beyond, I want to reassure you that the community's feedback is heard loud and clear. And putting more secrets into Destiny 2 is an initiative our teams have been working on for months before this conversation recently came to a head. Some secrets will be small, some will be large, some will come next year, and some are right around the corner. But I promise you that we've got a talented group of people who love this type of content and who knows what it means for the community to discover and experience it. Guys, this is what we like to read. Listen, it's not that it's just secret missions or puzzles. It's a level of exploration. That's what these missions drive. And if there's something that Destiny does miss from time to time, because so many things are like instance based, you hit an icon in a menu, you load up in a playlist and you kill some things. The thing about these secret missions that are so incredible is the discovery of them, especially the whisper mission. That's that level of adventure, exploration that I personally yearn for in the world of Destiny. So it's good to see that Bungie has taken note that we want these things back in the game. Keep in mind, we have an exotic quest literally next Tuesday. Fashion accessory of the season, the hidden blade. Last week, we asked you to create a cool and imaginative versions of Destiny 2 and Ubisoft characters, and you certainly delivered. Whether it was an art submission, a fun short movie, or a nice outfit made out of cloaks and hidden blades, all your creations were amazing. We love checking them out in the hashtag leap into the light hashtag. Choosing the winners was not easy, but I think we've managed to make a great assortment so far. This is just the first few, and we'll show more during the coming weeks. Oh, yes! Some of these look pretty good, no lie. Now, the winning ornament is, remember when we told you back in August that you would have the chance to vote for a weapon to get a new ornament designed by a community artist? Time flies. Long story short, Arbalus won. The community artist, Stellar State Logic, drafted three options for you to vote for, and today is the day we will tell you which one was the fan favorite. We counted the votes, we checked the numbers against each other, and the winner, with 55.5% of the votes, is Synthwave. Dude, isn't it kind of funny that the weapon design here, like this ornament, looks just like the weapons in the Lightfall gameplay trailer? Not gonna lie, guys, kind of sus. Now, remember in 2022, and now, a moment to reflect. We are approaching the end of the year, and we couldn't miss the opportunity to highlight some of our favorite moments of 2022. Some things might seem small from the outside, like changing the number of our patch notes, rest in peace, 4.2.0, or messing around with a weapon gone rogue. Others are as big as launching the official Destiny 2 TikTok account, showcasing Destiny 2's next expansion, or, you know, joining Sony Interactive Entertainment. Yeah, that's a pretty big one. But if you're honoring this whole year, we have to start with you, the Destiny 2 community. The community managers at Bungie always have a great time writing community-focused articles. We talk to content creators like Gamer Girl Great, artists like Casey Rue, and cosplayers like Lily Bean, and the list goes on and on. So many beloved names out there, it's hard to pick just a few. Getting to know their personal stories is a pivotal tool to better connect with the community. During 2022, we have widened our reach with more international support and showcase some creators for countries like Spain, Poland, Brazil, and many other places. And speaking of Brazil, we launched new social media channels in Portuguese in October. Oh, but getting even closer to players all over the world is something we'll continue to work on in 2023. Then there are the community artists. Not even a million 
same words would equal the talents of our beloved creators of videos, fan art, fashion statements. You have examples of their genius in every twab. So please keep sharing your amazing work on social media with the hashtag AOTW as well as the movie of the week hashtag so we can keep featuring them. No lie, we have some talented people, man, in this community. It's nuts. The hardest thing I could draw is SpongeBob. We also have amazing cosplayers that can make Savanoons Kain look totally real and make her look as scary as, well, she really is. We also have a very funny and ingenious ones like the ones we showed on the Shreds of Light costume contest. Feel free to create your own take on your favorite character. We totally support it. Another way of honoring the community we set up was the random act kindness. No matter how small you think a good deed might be, it will always leave ripples in the Destiny universe. We intend to keep giving out a certain very special emblem to the nicest people in the community. So don't stop being nice to each other. And we even had some community gatherings the old way, you know, in person. In October, hundreds of guardians had an amazing time in Melbourne, Australia. During a community event where even Savathun dropped by. The very next month, more than 300 Italian community members had an amazing day during the Milan Games Week. Ramblums were given, created to share their views about the game. Savathun was there as well. Isn't she lovely? And tomorrow, we will have another one in the United Kingdom, in London. The tickets sold out just after 90 minutes of going live. Thank you for your enthusiasm. What else? Oh, how about some amazing developer spotlights and tech blocks? We're incredibly proud of the work Bungie artists do and how they shape the way Destiny 2 looks and feels. Something that wouldn't be possible without engineers creating the code that makes everything work. Or storytellers that build the most intriguing lore and the most touching moments of every season. The musicians and audio designers filling each room with touching melodies and unforgettable sound effects. We love Destiny 2 as much as anyone else. And we always aim to improve the player experience, even if sometimes that means acknowledging what went wrong. Explaining what worked and what didn't with the launch of Iron Banner Rift, even if it left us in a very vulnerable place, was totally worth it. And finally, Bungie as a game studio has supported multiple charities through the Bungie Foundation in 2022, and we are committed, as always, to all the causes worth fighting for. It's also a privilege to celebrate and honor dates like the National Coming Out Day, to support essential healthcare rights for everyone in the U.S., to raise awareness on conflicts around the world, and to stand against hate. Now, some known issues before I let you go, and before we get to the sad part of this twab, with the launch of the Donning, we have learned of some potential inconsistencies with Eva's inventory and quest steps. Players can review the following information if they have difficulty locating their quests or ovens. So players who want to obtain the Donning quest on multiple characters may need to view all pages of Eva's inventory to find the quest. Now, I think she's got three pages, right? The Donning quest can only be completed once per account, and if one character has already obtained the Cookie Deliverer Help Request step, alternate characters will need to obtain the quest step from the quest archive in the tower, not from Eva. Now, known issues, the big ones that are jumping out, the unstoppable hand cannon mod may play audio for an extended length of time when aiming down sights on any weapon. The Jade Rabbit exotic scout rifle is currently disabled due to an issue. It's actually transferring damage buffs to other weapons. Dude, Jade Rabbit is starting to become like Telesto, right? Dang thing is always bugged. Now to the sad part, a very special farewell. As some of you might already know, Dylan slash DMG is leaving Bungie's community team at the end of the month. It's hard to put together how we feel about him, but let's try. First, as part of the Destiny player support team and later as a community manager, Dylan's contribution to make Bungie and Destiny better is unmeasurable. He is honest and respectful, shows a genuine love for his work, and always takes everyone's feedback seriously, no matter if you're a new player or if you've been here since the alpha or if you are a new member of his team. We can make a 10,000 word twab about him and that wouldn't even begin to do his yellow beanie justice. So we'll just keep it short and sweet. When you are great, you never truly leave. So this is not a goodbye, but a thank you. And that's how it is. Thanks, DMG. I do want to read this real quick, guys. This makes me incredibly sad. So from DMG here from his Twitter, taking a leap of faith, stepping down as senior CM, final day of Bundy coming on December 30th. Don't know where the future will take me, but looking forward to the new opportunities and new challenges. Thank you all for your time over the years. Full message below. And he states right here, hey y'all, let's get to it. Wanted to give you a heads up that I'll be stepping down from the community management on December 30th. At this time in my career, I'm thinking of embracing a new direction. Maybe I'll stick in the game industry and go for a different role in communications. Maybe I'll try my hand at game design. Maybe I'll do something entirely different and investigate commercial baking. That, that's baking, not banking. Baking, like baking cookies. Okay, only time will tell but I'm excited to see where things go. I believe I could write a mega twelve blog article about the amazing experience I've had during my time here at Bungie. I can't imagine another position where I'd have the pleasure of working with so many awesome people and so many awesome teams. From my first day on Destiny Player Support Team, just before House of Wolves, through the latest season of The Seraph, it's been an adventure that was never dull. Jesus, man, DMG has been there for so long. Bungie Foundation drives, meet and greets, 2 a.m. launches, tapers, 10,000 word patch note publications, working E3 in packs, social initiatives and support, or unrepresented groups groups, not to mention against bigotry and hate, reveal streams, quotes, we're listening, <laughs> yes, bread, emergency triages, and so much more will live in my memory and hearts for years to come. I cannot thank Bungie enough for the opportunity to help with all the things above. Teamwork makes the dream work. And hell, if I couldn't say Bungie has some of the best teams I've ever seen. I look forward to reading Twobs as a fan, seeing continued improvements to communications from the community team and stellar content from the teams at Bungie for Destiny 2 and beyond. As for
this community. It's hard to think of any words to really encapsulate how much you've all impacted my life. So many friendships started here. Some people I consider family were introduced to me through Bungie and Destiny. Seeing how much impact Guardians can have and bettering this role continues to astound me with each passing day. Each of you contributes so much to this community in so many ways. I will forever be thankful for your voices and your time, and I'll always look back fondly at my time on the community team thanks to you. I admit this is a scary move, but some of the most amazing opportunities have come during times of drastic change in my life. I've learned so much during my time in this position from everyone at Bungie and this community. I really cannot thank you all enough. Hope to make you proud. Much love, Dylan DMG. DMG, we're gonna miss you, man. No lie, dude, this hurts so bad. First Deej, now Dylan. Hell, the last one left is Cosmo. Really, really though, good luck, Dylan. Wherever you're going, whatever team takes you, whatever endeavor it may be, they are blessed to have you, man, as we have truly been blessed to have you all these years. Now, see you in 2023. So how did I do? Hopefully, it was at least enjoyable. First one for me, but number 47 for the year and last of 2022. Remember, there won't be a new TWAM until January the 12th, and there are no plan updates or hotfixes either, but we'll still keep an eye on things to make sure our cherished game keeps chugging along as usual. By the time we're back on our usual schedule, Lightfall will just be a little more than a month away, but that's plenty of time to tackle a few topics, comment on the changes we are making, and explain all the wonderful novelties that are coming. Look at this. This is a picture of two Cloud Striders enjoying their well-deserved time off. Dude, I have a feeling a Cloud Strider could straight up beat the piss out of a Guardian in a 1v1, right? Watch what I say. Not much else to say, so we wish you all the best. Do something fun and rewarding, play some games, maybe farm a few new God Roasts. Enjoy the cold or warm weather, greetings to the South Hemisphere, and eat something fancy while spending some quality time with those you love the most. If you need some traditional Spanish food recipes, just ask. No matter how or where you celebrate this time of the year, or even if you don't celebrate it at all, this community is wonderful and thrives when we support each other. Let's keep that attitude during the last weeks of 2022 and when 2023 starts. Oh, and you reading this? You deserve the best and we are proud of you. Hasta luego, Bruno. Guys, that is our final TWAB for 2022. I love you guys. I feel like we've been covering TWABs, man, every day since what, 2018? But I feel like with every single year, the TWABs, man, they carry so much weight, right? They get chunkier and chunkier. They're the mouthpiece of Bungie. They can start fires and simultaneously put them out. I'd say a good portion of y'all probably come here just for the TWABs. And I very much appreciate you guys choosing our channel and listening to these videos. I'm just a dude getting hyped, reading these things. I'm looking forward to 2023 with all of you. Again, thank you so much for your many blessings. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.